as they say your health is your responsibility and if you have a good health there are a lot of things you can conquer hello this is reeshram from iw tv back with another health related segment where today's video is fully dedicated to all the women out there and those who are facing problems like thyroid pcod or has a problem of irregular periods and is worried will she be able to conceive in the future face fertility issues and if she has fertility issues at present what next are there any ways she can solve this so today's segment will be clearing a lot of these doubts as we have been joined by dr nandita palshetkar who is our country's top notch gynecologist and founder medical director of the famous bloom ivf group firstly thank you so much ma'am for being a part of the segment resham i'm really happy to be here So uh, ma'am you know that today's topic is all about you know women health and also uh, you know clearing a lot of our doubts that can they conceive if they have thyroid or pcod or you know having irregular periods so that is all it is all about and i'm sure that at the end of the segment a lot of our doubts are going to be cleared for the same so ma'am uh, like jumping straight to the questions the first thing that i want to ask very basic and of course that we can guess from the question the topic as well which is skin thyroid disorders pcos pcod and irregular periods you know affect the fertility of a woman and if so then how yeah i think if you look at it all the three things you know the pcos the thyroid and the irregular periods can all affect fertility in fact uh, thyroid disorders can disrupt hormone levels which are really very important for uh, ovulation and maintaining a pregnancy and pcos to we know can cause irregular ovulation the ovulation is a problem and therefore uh, the ovulation is disrupted and cysts are formed also so irregular periods may indicate ovulation issues making it difficult to predict fertile days overall all these conditions uh, make conception more challenging but remember that they can be treated with medical intervention so don't worry about it so oh. ma'am are there any diagnostic test or evaluation that can help access fertility potential in individuals with these issues yeah of course i think there are lots of diagnostic tests and evaluations that can help assess the fertility potential in advance and i think hormone testing is one of the basic ones the first thing that comes to mind assessing the level of hormones like thyroid t3 t4 fsh lh and testosterone can actually prove Well, you know they can provide insights into hormone imbalances. Then for irregular periods, we like to do thyroid and prolactin levels also. And uh, remember one thing: today there's a new test called AMH, which is again a blood test, and that can definitely help us diagnose the problem. Then other thing is like ovulation tracking can be done. You know because we'll know whether she's ovulating or not. And these uh, we have urine pregnancy, urine urine testing kits, which actually tell you whether ovulation is occurring or not. And the older thing of taking temperature body temperature and cervical mucus but with the kids life is made much easier and of course an ultrasound is very very important because it helps you give us a diagnosis and uh, as i said before sometimes if there's irregular periods and there's early menopause a genetic test is also indicated at times so these tests can actually provide us with a kind of a diagnosis as well as a management plan and uh, definitely that management will help us improve the fertility of these patients ma'am can you talk a little more about the hormone test that we have to uh, get done because you know people know about it but they not really ha have a clear picture of the same but what exactly are the hormonal tests that we have to go through as a woman the hormone tests which are there are very simple it's a blood test which is taken i the fasting or even it can be taken in a non fasting state so t3 t4 tsh are the levels we do for thyroid disorders then for pcod we like to do the amh the day 2 fsh lh and e2 now that test is important that on day 2 we have to measure these three hormones of fsh lh and e2 and uh, as i said for irregular periods we add one more that is prolactin so in any of these 
these three cases, I think these hormone tests are very, very important and they give you, us a clue how to manage the patient, how to diagnose the patient and of course that will help their fertility eventually. With that, ma'am, are there any lifestyle factors or habits that can lessen the effect of thyroid, PCOS or regular, irregular periods for that matter on fertility? Lifestyle factors meaning, you know, uh, you always have to uh, tell them about maintaining a good weight because as obesity itself or underweight also, even underweight or overweight. Now, in Indian women, the, no, the normal BMI is between uh, under 23, okay, because it's not like the foreign counterpart. And uh, so definitely the, uh, the weight matters. Then eating a balanced diet. Today, you know, whenever I see a patient, I tell them that four parts are very important. One is your uh, diet. Diet means it should be full of micronutrients, full of, uh, you know, vitamins and essential amino acids, which are required for the bodily function. The second is mental health. You know, mental health has to be good. If you're in depression or if you're worrying about something, anxiety, etc., needs to be, uh, you know, uh, tackled. The third thing is exercise. I think exercise, the metabolism, it boosts all your bodily function and releases all the good, uh, you know, feel good factors. So exercise is very important. And the fourth pillar I feel is the medical pillar, which we take care of. But the three pillars are in your hands and you have to, you know, uh, take care of those. And of course, another important thing, uh, which today uh, the lifestyle is drinking, smoking. I see so many girls who are smoking. So I think uh, recreational drugs, drinking, smoking has to be cut off and stress management. You know, uh, when I talk about mental health, uh, I do include stress management in it because I think, you know, Anything like meditation, yoga is really good. But people like me, I can't meditate to save my life. You know, I've tried and it's difficult because my brain is overloaded. So then watch a Netflix, read a book, you know, one hour where you give yourself me time. Yeah. I think that way also it can uh, really help. Like a continuation to your um, you know, answer. So you mean to say that weight management does play a role in improving fertility outcomes too? Like at a great yes. Obesity definitely causes infertility, meaning subtle changes are there, ovulatory changes are there. Second thing is, um, you know, the endometrium also can get affected with the baby implants and then once you get pregnant the abortion rate is higher then uh, complications in pregnancy are much higher so definitely it it is not good the weight issues are always there and remember that it does not only uh, i mean a woman who is a little plump or obese can transmit that same obesity to her child so it's very very important to get your weight and under control yes as rightly said ma'am with that how long should individuals with these issues like thyroid pcos pcod try to conceive naturally before seeking you know fertility assistance like when they should like just visit the doctor then it's the time uh, I think, uh, you know, let's take a standard thing. Uh, like uh, if you're younger than 35, you normally wait for a year before you co contact the doctor. But if you're already taking medications, I think you can try for six months. Hmm. With the medication, if it works or not. And uh, maybe six months to a year. And hmm. there's no such guideline as such. But this is a practical experience. I've been practicing for 30 years. And this is what I tell all my patients. Okay. And uh, if you're above 35, I think do not wait for more than three to six months. And if you're above the age of 40, go immediately to the fertility doctor. Because, you know, it's 70% of the people above 40 have fertility issues. So hmm. the faster you go, the better is the chance of having a baby. Yeah. So ma'am, I think we have talked about the problems and the waiting time and, you know, how to bring about changes in your lifestyle. Now, I really want to know the treatment options available for these people. I think thyroid is very simple. If it's uh, a low thyroid levels, we give you supplements of thyroid hormone and it gets you back to normal. We can only monitor it with symptoms and with uh, blood tests. Uh, and if it's a hyperthyroid, there are medications to bring down the thyroid levels also. Mm. So thyroid can be treated with medication. PCOD, if you see, the problem is not having, uh, not producing eggs. You have eggs, but you don't ovulate. Mm. 
So then we give medications for ovulation induction. Mm. Uh, we have clomiphene, we have letrozole, we have gonadotropins. We try and make, uh, you know, help them conceive by natural, naturally, by just having intercourse, by giving these medicines and, uh, you know, tracking the ovulation. Or you can do intrauterine insemination medications. Mm. So intrauterine insemination is after giving medicines and all, we take the semen of the husband, process it in such a way that we get to only the best sperms out. And then that is put inside her uterine cavity. Uh, success rate is about 15 to 20 percent per attempt. And if that doesn't work, then we go to IVF. Mm -hmm. You know, IVF is where we take the eggs out of the body, the sperms are taken, baby is created outside the body in the lab. Yeah. And then this baby is put back into a womb. Success rate is about 50 percent to 60 percent. Hmm. So PCOS, I always tell the patient that it's a graded therapy. First, we'll try natural medication. Then we'll try IUI. If not, then IVF. And believe me, most of the patients conceive in this graded treatment. Uh, and for irregular periods, it's simple if you don't... See, there's a very simple funda. Try medications. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, then go for IUI, go for IVF. And very important here is to do the husband's semen analysis. Never forget the husband out of the equation remember that that you have to do the semen analysis okay uh ma'am with that there's a question that i also want to personally ask like which is more uh like problematic when it comes to you know fertility is the pcod or pcos pcod and pcos are the same thing okay people, some people call it pcos some people call it pcod so uh, you know, it depends, you know, PCOD ranges from mild to severe. Hmm. It depends on which part of the spectrum you are on. So as I told you, mild ones will conceive with only medications. The moderate ones will require IUI and the severe ones sometimes require IVF. Hmm. So, but PCOD generally, my experience with PCOD patients is that they go home with a pain. Okay. Okay. So, ma'am, uh, that's good to hear. And lastly, that I want to ask is that are there any alternative or complementary therapies that may be beneficial for improving fertility outcomes? <laughs> I think you're asking an allopath about complementary <laughs> therapy. Uh, but yes, I do resort to acupuncture. Okay. Uh, I do uh, believe in giving supplements to the patient. Uh, there are a lot of papers, research work being done on Chinese herbal medicines. But uh, unfortunately, in our journals where the papers come in, they've said that they do not have any much effect. So we don't know. But yes, some of the Ayurvedic preparations are good. But you have to be very careful because um, you have to be treated by a proper doctor of alternative medicine, I think. And I really believe in your yoga, meditation. So as I said, you know, treating a patient with these problems and trying to conceive fertility point of view, it's a holistic treatment. And anything that helps me, I'm really open to it. So yes, those are the treatments. I mean, I don't know, have I thought of anything more yoga and traditional? Yeah. And I mentioned, I think I mentioned everything that no. I set out to do. Yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, thank you for the session, ma'am. I think you've told uh, like you shared a lot of your knowledge and I'm sure our viewers will gain a lot from this particular segment thank you so much Dr. Nandita for being a part of this session thank you thank you ma'am